Be inspired this morning to be your best self. Celebrate life. It's a book here. Explains how to live it up, discover fulfillment, and experience the joy you deserve. Life coach Marcello Petalino has compiled a list of the best celebration of life ideas in this book. I love it. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I have to point this out. This yes. cute little girl here was how old in this picture? I think she's about four years old there. She's eight years old now. Yes, she is. She's, she's in her today. studio yes, sitting is. over there so quietly and so sweet. I snuck in a wave. She waved back. <laughs> you put her on the cover, obviously, because she's one of your sources of happiness. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. And she's actually the reason why I, I wrote the book. I wanted to make sure that, uh, as you know, we're not guaranteed to live forever. Absolutely. So I wanted to make sure that if I did die too soon, that Isabella would be able to learn everything I ever wanted to have taught her. So I love it. Um, you first start with what some people don't do well, which is taking care of yourself. Yeah, you know, Lauren, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of the people who depend on you. I agree. So for some people, that's their family. For some people, that's their clients. And uh, there's a trilogy. There's a trifecta. And it's sleep, nutrition, and exercise. You need to make those a priority or you're going to make your life much harder than it needs to be. I like the concept you say of becoming your own boss or finding the right boss. Because so often, we're in these environments of like stress and we're just not happy. And that's a source of unhappiness for a lot of people. Absolutely. Being your own boss or finding the right boss, uh, what, you're, what you want is flexibility. Because if you don't have flexibility in your work schedule, you're not going to be able to pursue your passions and what's important to you. So it's not easy to go out and find your own uh, or to have the courage to go start your own business and that's fine. So you can actually find a boss. There are some out there. There's quite a few and I'm going to be speaking with a lot of them this week. That's why I'm here in Philly um, who do get it. They understand that if you produce results, they right. will then uh, in return give you the flexibility you need to live your life and be happy and enjoy yourself. One thing you point out, uh, defining your own success, because so many people live by other people's standards. Mom wanted me to become a doctor. Dad wanted me to follow in his footsteps to become mm -hmm. a lawyer. But it might not be at all what you want for yourself. Sure. So the first challenge is to find out what it is that you love to do. Right. Then once you find out what it is that you love to do, then you need to actually define what success is. Because as entrepreneurs, a lot of us want to be successful. So a lot of people define success by money, status, or time. I'm a big believer in your last segment, even 50, over 50% 50 of the people said that it's not money, it's not status. It's not. Time is life's most precious commodity. You need to savor every second. So. Speaking of time, I love when I take the time out to travel, and I love that you pointed that out, that it's very important for people to do. Travel is a huge component of celebrating life, and there's a whole chapter about it in the book. And the reason I, I recommend people travel to, to travel is because you will experience and learn from other people's cultures. Mm -hmm. I learned, my family and I, we go to Costa Rica every year, and out there we learn that you can make half as much money but you can be twice as happy. I agree. And if you're going to travel, if, you, if you're an entrepreneur, you say, what's well, tough to travel? What is tough? You have to make sure that you delegate or suffocate. That's a big line my friend taught me a long time ago. And uh, if you do go on vacation, I will tell you this, be mindful on vacation. Okay, leave your smartphone I in know. the in the condo, whatever it is, and enjoy. Be present. Be present. I always say that at dinner with people because everyone's on their phones. Yes. One quick question I noticed. A lot of your book is about pictures and quotes at the very end of mm -hmm. it. Yes. Why were these pictures so important for you to add to the story? Well, that's part of the chapter of letting it go. It's called let it go. There are times in your life when you're trying to celebrate life, when you're trying to enjoy yourself, you're trying to just get by, but there are challenges that come up that are um, tough, mm -hmm. okay? And in order to let things go, you need what we call an active release technique. And for people, so for some folks, it's, it's exercise. For me, it's exercise, but I also enjoy photography. Yeah. So what I did was I, comb I combined photography with some of my favorite inspirational quotes. And by being productive, it uh, prevented me from uh, perhaps eating more than yeah. I should or doing something that would be more of, of, of a depressive state. So it's I being productive. It. Thank you so much for stopping in. Isabella, I think we finally got a camera on you. Hey, so baby. can you give us a big wave? And wife, thank you. That's your support system right there, there right? There it is. There it is. Work-life right. balance right Marcello, there. Marcello, thank you for stopping by our studio. My we pleasure. Thank it. you, Lauren. Marcello, stuck around with us because we're going to talk about sometimes you got to give a little to get a little, right? Mm -hmm. That's according to a university study linking generosity and happiness. So University of Zurich researchers have people promise to spend money either on themselves or other people over a four-week period. They found that the people who spent money on other people people felt happier. Behavioral economics, economists call the sensation a warm glow and don't feel as if you have to give up everything to feel good. The study says the amount of generosity does not matter as long as one is generous. I like this. Doing for other people always makes you feel happier, don't you agree? Absolutely. So there's a chapter in the book just for that. It's called Make a Difference. And the bottom line there is if you want to feel good about yourself, be good to somebody else. And you're teaching this cute little one here. Can you tell us, can you tell us what you like most about dad? 
Um, he, he always helps me when I um, hurt myself. Oh, got to have daddy's <laughs> loving arms when you hurt yourself, right? I love it. How cool is that book? When you see yourself on the front, can you believe that's you? Yeah, I... <laughs> I remember that time. You remember that day? <laughs> wow. She was growing up fast. And every time I have to, if I'm asked to sign the book, Isabella gets out her Sharpie. and she Oh, I love it. Herself, which is great. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm on here too, right? Yes, absolutely. That's super cool. Wow. So we talk about some things that we do, Scott and I, when yeah. we like want to feel happy. Of course, giving back to others is always good. But for me, it's mm -hmm. journaling. So I got a journal from one of my girlfriends like a year ago, and it sat on my shelf, and it was dusty for a while. And then it says, choose happy on the front of it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to write in here at least every day or at least once a week mm -hmm. if I don't get around to it about things I'm grateful for and that keeps me in a good mood. What do you do? Uh, you know I like to cook. That's so, true. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to cook. I like to entertain and I like to cook for other people there because you there you go uh, being generous and giving. So um, good food, good friends, good fun. I love it. All right. Marcello again, thanks for coming by. Isabella, thank you for coming by. You're welcome. We love you.